He is from one of the best-selling bands in history, over 80 million records sold, nine top 10 hits, has a number one record that pushed Band-Aids, Do They Know It's Christmas, out of the number one spot, and the video for I Want to Know What Love Is has over 331 million views on YouTube. That's just one song, guys. But today, after being eligible to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame's ballot for 22 years, we can all say the word, finally. Lou, congratulations, and thank you so much for being here. Oh, I appreciate the the, uh, the congrats, and, and it's, it's good to be with you both. Oh, Lou, oh my God. So I'm... I'm saying finally. Everybody is saying finally. What was it? They like? really are. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for sure. Like, what was it like when you first found out the info that you guys were finally nominated to be on this ballot? Uh, um, um, it, it, it was Foreigner's manager that called me and let me know it let me know hey lou it finally happened i go what are you talking about yeah and, and he said well the rock and roll hall of fame has put you guys up for induction <sighs> and, and I, I i really didn't know what to say i was stunned because i i had already written it off as something that was never going to happen right right where were you when you got that phone call i was in my living room and just, At home. Just hanging out, because you are a homebody. Yes, I am. Yeah, I, I have, a, uh, you know, in the winter months, I, in, the, in the spring and summer, I live in Rochester, New York, but uh, I, I, I'm having a tough time handling the, the winter months after living there all my life, and so I got a, a small little home in Sarasota, Florida, and that's where I go for the winter months. And that's where you got the call? Yes. Oh, my God. I got to tell you, Lou, when I found out, I'm like, okay, because I'm thinking back to the April 1st post that Foreigner put on their Facebook page. Did you happen to see that? I don't think so. It, it, it ended up being a joke and because they're like, oh, you know, we finally got, we're, we're going to be, ro- you know, inducted or into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. They had a special meeting and I'm like, I know this is a joke, but then when I found out that it was real this this time, <laughs> I, I, I couldn't believe it. And I'm like, I, I'm so happy for you, really, truly. Thank you. There, w- there was no special meeting. We were inducted with everybody else, right? Right, right. Now, before we get into, it's awesome. It's awesome. Now, before we get into everything about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, you know, which is exciting for everybody, you're doing more shows with Brett Michaels and Party Gras this year. And I got to ask it, those shows must be so fun because Brett is so high energy and you are too. Like you, you are just out there having a great time, but what is it like to be now working with Brett Michaels and, and really getting yourself into, you know, in front of a whole different demo? It's great. I, I'm I'm performing. I think uh, a half a dozen, give or take, a song or two of of my songs and my songs with Foreigner, and uh, I'm I'm using his band, which he's very gracious to to allow me to use his band. Uh, there there thereby, uh, you know, he plays for a while, and then he introduces me, and I walk on stage and I do my first song. You know. So it's not like a changeover of equipment and all that other stuff. It's very, very, uh, very, very systematically punchy, you know? Yeah, yeah. But, I, I mean, Brett, now we went to Party Gras. We, we were there actually with Steve Jerry this year. It was just such uh-huh. a fun, fun show. And it's something different than what you are used to doing, right? Oh yes, definitely. Yeah, the, the whole the whole atmosphere and the whole relationship between Brett and the audience is, is different than, than I'm used to. And how did that whole connection happen with you and Brett? Because I think it's perfect. I mean, he's '80s, you're '80s, and how did that happen? Well, uh, um, we we just just for chance we we over the last year or so we've done a couple shows together with his band and my band. And, and uh, you know, I, I went over to see him in his dressing room after his after his set, and, and uh, we talked and we started laughing. We got along really good, and I said goodbye, thinking thinking nothing more of it. 
and then then finding out from my booking agent that that he had a number of shows that he wanted me to be a part of <laughs> and and uh, the, the the money was right the timing was right and and you know i i definitely said yes oh that is just oh my gosh so awesome and so like i said it's, it's- it's really, it's really, uh, uh, it, it, you know, it, maybe some people wouldn't think so, but it really is a good match. Uh, the, 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 the tonality and the, 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 the songs are, are vastly different from each other, but they go together good. And that's what I was going to say. It's just a perfect fit because it's the whole timing of, you know, the 80s is the 80s. And now, do you do I Want to Know What Love Is in that, in, in Party Gras, or do you do other songs? Um, we don't do I Want to Know What Love Is in Party Gras because, because Brett asked me to keep it up-tempo. Yep. So we, we just concentrate on the rockers. Gotcha. And I, I don't mind that either So for something different. Yeah, it's it's just, it's got to be so fun for you. But now this year, you'll be on stage with Brett and Chris Jansen, D. Snyder, and Don Felder. Now, I don't know if you've ever worked with Chris or D, but... I think, and and correct me if I'm wrong, Lou, but the last time you were on stage with Don Felder, I think, was when he was with the Eagles, and it was in 1977 at A Day on the Green, May 28th and May 30th, and the late promoter Bill Graham, he started these shows back in 1973 in Oakland, California. Now, am I incorrect, or have you worked with Don since then? I don't think so, but but you're you're really correct, and that was Foreigner's first big show. Really? Yeah, you know, we 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 were the first band on, and we started at seven thirty in the morning. <sighs> so 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 Bill Graham came to our dress room and and asked to see Nick and myself, and and took us to the stage where they were still fin- putting the finishing touches on on our equipment and stuff, and. and 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 uh, uh, Bill looks at his watch and he says, "Look at this." So as soon as it clicked to seven o'clock, the doors opened and the people came out like like stamper peeding horses, and 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 the place filled up so quick. You know, it, it was an awesome sight to see that. I'd never never seen anything like that before, and, and uh, I thank Bill because that would that that's a, that's a one of a kind, you know, and and. Uh, so, so we we played a very successful set for a new band. We were a brand new band then, and and, uh, and and after that, he invited all the people, all the bands that that played on, at Day in the Green to his his home. After and cooked, he had dinner cooked for us. We 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 had uh, we you know a lot of lot of uh, war stories and and fun fun stories and stuff like that. And we went on into the middle of the night, and then. We, everybody said good night. It was a it was an awesome, complete awesome day. Wow! And I mean, Lou, isn't it true though? Those were the days. I mean, that time you performed with Heart again, the Eagles, the Atlanta Rhythm Section, the Steve. Yes, that's right. The Steve Miller well, Band, right? Steve Miller Band. Yes, yes. I mean, those were the times when you got to literally be on stage and, and, and next to and, you know, performing alongside all of these great bands. You know, what was it like back then to be able to say, listen, I'm on the bill with with all of these guys and, and ladies. How great was that? It was great because, because, you know, we were we were still seventy seven. We were a relatively new band. We had just released our first album, and and, and we had been we had been opening up our our tour was opening up for the Doobie Brothers, and, and and suddenly we got this offer from Bill to to participate in in Dan the Green, and we we really didn't know that much about it, but but we we did see some footage from from. Uh, uh, from a few years earlier, and, and the, the audience was just unbelievable, and, and we we all decided that we definitely want to be a part of that. Amazing, absolutely amazing. I mean, you just have some some wonderful memories that you always have to share with us, and we thank you for that. But now, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. There has been so much, you know, talk about this, and you and I have talked about this several times off camera. Yes, because I know we have. Yeah, yes. it, it, right. Because I remember. 
because it's like I I didn't want to talk to you about it on camera because I feel like this has been such a <laughs> it, it's been talked about for so long. I've been on YouTube since 2017, and I feel like this is all I've been talking about since then. Oh. Is about why is foreigner not on the ballot yet? But now you finally are, and you had always said. And, and you said it to others as well. You know, it's a personal thing. I, I believe it's a personal thing. And, and we, we got to talk about Jan Wenner, you know, co-founder of Rolling Stone magazine. And y- you thought it came from him. Now, Jan did come out and he did say, yeah, it's really like a popularity contest. And I got to tell you, I was so angry when I read that because who has the right to do that, first of all? But clearly that is, you know, what was going on behind the scenes yeah. but what do you well, think well, let me tell you, let me tell you something quickly him and mick were good friends at that time very good friends they they, they mick and his wife ann and and jan and his wife would would go out to dinner they they were uh, uh tennis buddies they they would they would run together and stuff like that they they, they were pretty close friends and, and when when we had been suddenly we gotten turned down every year for four four or five years, uh, um, from what I remember is that that our manager at the time and and Mick went into to uh, the Hall of Fame offices to 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 talk to to Jan and, and um, tempers flared and and Mick and our manager walked out of the door and as they were leaving. Mick told me Jan was screaming out, "It'll be a cold day in hell when Foreigner gets in the hall." Oh man! And when but you know what? You, do you do you know that 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 we're we're uh, uh, we're close to being nominated now, and he's not part of it anymore? Right. Right. It's it's strange. So that 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 tells me that that he he was the thorn. And it's just sad because all these years, I mean, you've been eligible since 2002, and you can't go back. We all have to move forward. We know that. That's correct. That's correct. But, you know, it's just like, what the heck? I mean, it, it really, and it really, to me, it cements the fact of what he said last year about, yeah, it's a popularity contest. And, you know, it, it just sucks, Lou. But you know you're here today, and and you're but fine. That's not what it's supposed to be about. It's supposed to be about the the the, the length and breadth of, of your career, your 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 creative side, your performance side, and, and how 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 the masses see you. Yeah, yeah. you know it's a, a lot of things. It, it's not just a popularity contest. That's right. Absolutely, I'm with you. And you know, every, because every Lou, I, I'm just telling you, everyone, and you know it. I mean, everyone has said every single year, really, foreigners not on again. Like, come on. I mean, th- it, it's just crazy. But you're here today, and thankfully, you and Mick are here, and you'll be able to see this because I'm not saying if you get inducted, I'm going with when you get inducted. <laughs> Uh, I, I'd like to 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 go with that statement too, but but after all that's gone down, uh, I'm I'm patiently waiting and not going to say anything no. if or when. I hear you. I'm going to go with when, but you know, I okay. I I, under, I completely understand. Now, when Foreigner does get the induction, getting into the Rock Hall is going to be you and Mick. Dennis Elliott, Al Greenwood, Rick Wills, and the late Ed Gagliardi and Ian McDonald. Now, what would Ed and Ian say, do you think, you know, in your mind, no, knowing these gentlemen, you know, about finally getting into the Rock Hall? Well, I know Ian would say it's about effing time. time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I'm sure. And Al, Al, Al would be, all right. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. So I know you have also a mixed bag of emotions about, you know, this nomination. But, you know, have you finally said, you know what? This is finally our time. And it is, you know, finally our chance to to show the world, you know what? We belong to be here because, Lou, you're part of one of the world's most biggest and best 
selling bands ever. And I get chills just saying that when I talk to you. But you really have been on a roller coaster ride with, you know, the fact of being asked all the time about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction and nomination. You know, what are you feeling today about it? Well, I, I, I think the 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 raw excitement of it is is long past. You know, I, I feel a sense of satisfaction, and I'm 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 pleased that it, that it's finally happened. But I, I know that if it happened when it was supposed to, eight or ten years ago, uh, I would have been bouncing off the walls. Yeah. Now, now I'm calmly saying, "Oh, that's really great." And that's about it. Yeah. Now, the relationship between you and Mick, we know that that, you know, has had its its ups and downs as well. And you've seen Mick a few times since the Songwriters Hall of Fame induction. And you both seemed okay with each other. And you did the big interview with Dan Rather, which was quite interesting. That was back in 2019. And during that interview, Mick said a bunch of things. And one of the things he said was he shouldn't have let a lot of time go by without speaking with you. And you've been very open about your feelings about Mick and and the royalties with I want to know what love is. What do you think, you know, is going to be on your mind when you see Mick again for the Rock Hall induction? Well, I, I, I know that, that the the Rock Hall it has, a, has a lot to do with the songs we wrote together. And, and of course, the band's performance and, and the hard work we put into to making them popular. Uh, um, I, 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 I still don't feel totally right with Mick. We, we, you know, there's a hatchet to be buried in it, and it's still right between us. And, um, if we could do that, that would be great, but, but it'll, it'll be, it'll be just fine. Even if the hatchet's not buried, sometimes these things never resolve. Yeah. I don't dislike the guy. I, I like the guy, but, uh, but but uh, I, you know, he, uh, I was not treated the way I thought I should be treated. And, I and that's would... not to say I'm a, not a prima donna or anything. I, I just, I just did not not get the the my, my worth in in particular songs to the point where 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 not only my my songwriting contributions, but my vocal contributions counted as nothing. And there's more, there's more than one song that that's happened to. What are the other songs though? Uh, I, I'm not even going to mention it. Honest to God, I don't, I don't want to mention it. Sure. Sure. I don't, I don't want, I don't, I don't want to m- m- make this. Oh, sure. No, uh, I, I, uh, I understand. You know, but, 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 but there's, there's, there, there's few, there's a few. So in, you know, it, it used it used to be when we first got together, almost everything we wrote was a fifty fifty split, mm-hmm. or a sixty forty or sixty forty split with Mick getting sixty and I'm getting forty. And, and I would think about it, and I and I, I would say to myself, yeah, he does deserve the sixty. But 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 then for, for you know something like I want to know what love is that that he offers me ninety five. He says the split is ninety five five. And, and I, I, I was I was just stunned, and I didn't know where that was coming from, uh, other than greed. And and, uh, and it ended up being a hundred percent for him, and nothing for me. On a song like that, that that was number one around the world three times after we recorded it. And, uh, you, you know, I think the ASCAP and the publishing, uh, uh, they were just dumping truckfuls of money out over his house. And I, I, I didn't see any of it, nor, nor was my name uh, on the, the, the sheet music or the single or, or whatever, you know. I, I worked my ass off 
with him on that song for months and months and months. We we almost had it, but we couldn't crack it. It was never quite finished. And and there were times when we were ready to just give up on it, but we didn't. And, and, and we put in long hours trying to to complete that song. And when we finally completed it, it, it was such a, a load off our shoulders and, and, and felt very resolute about, about, about it. And, and we knew we had something good here. And I, I'm saying we, but apparently it's not we. And that's why I kind of feel like even if you were to, even, even if it's not bury the hatchet, but just because you and I had spoken about this before as well, even if it's not burying the hatchet, but behind closed doors, tell him how you feel. You know, do you think that would ever happen? Because at the Rock Hall induction, the, you know, you're going to be there, um, you know, a little bit earlier, or, you know, maybe the day before or whatever. And, you know, you might have dinner together. Maybe, you know, you two could have a conversation alone. And uh, I, you know what, that, that, that's a good idea, but I don't think it's the right time for that. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, if, if, if that conversation ended up exploding into flames before we were supposed to accept our award, true. that would be a, a real tra- tragedy. No, that's true. You're right. You're right. But maybe even another time before it all happens, just so you can lay those cards on the table. Cause I just feel like you, you've carried this for so long and it's just, you know, it's just one of those things, shoulda, woulda, coulda, and then you don't want to have to say, I never got the chance to say this, you know? Yep. Yeah. You know, I, I almost felt like, like uh, I hear stories about, about uh, songwriters and per- performers who, who, who work with other songwriters and performers, and uh, the, the one, one out of the two of them have had a lot more experience. And... and uh, they 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 come on with the the idea that it's going to be very fair between them, and then and then the less experienced one gets gets screwed, mm-hmm. and 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 uh, it's 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 a it's a sickening feeling to know that your songwriting partner and your bandmate for 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 many years has just let you know that you're not important. Well, know that you are important, um, you know, know that, and, and I understand what you're saying, Lou, I, I do, but know that, and, and you know how you're loved, like you are so loved around the world. Uh, I, 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 I know that, I'm, 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 I'm just say, saying the, 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 um, the, 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 the sick tragedy of, of, of the way this is ending Right. It, it is, uh. It's too bad it had to be like that, but it is like that. I, I cannot, I, I cannot say, "Oh, it's okay, Nick," knowing that 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 he he's made probably twenty five or thirty million off of that song, maybe more. And and uh, even if I got twenty five percent of it, it, it it would have been monumental to me, you know. But 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 at at five percent, I I I couldn't I couldn't be shamed like shamed like that. And that's why I definitely was worth much more than 5%. Absolutely. And that's why I truly hope you get to at least say what you feel someday. I really do. I really, I, I mean, I, I do believe that in my heart and soul. I, I really hope you get to just say it to him because I feel like it's important, even though, you know, it won't change anything, you know, monetarily, but I, I really hope you get to. At you least know, we, say we it. worked for weeks and weeks and weeks on that song. I mean, it was, we hit dead ends where we were ready to, 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 to pack that song in and maybe it would be on the next album if we could finish it, you know. But then we'd come back again and work a little harder, make a little headway on it. And, and when we finished it, it, it we, we had a, a celebration, just he and I, you know, that we finally uh, got a hold of that thing and, 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 and made it into a, to, to a potentially great song. Uh, but but you know we used to I think I told you what we used to do was take little post-it notes at the end of the album and write down what we thought our percentages of the songwriting for that particular song should be, and we've been doing that for for years, you know, and and we never had any problems. Maybe maybe it was ten percent one way or the other that that one of us thought was off, and we'd compromise and and it would be over in two minutes. But but with that song, he he. 
uh, I could tell j- just from his first offer, which was eighty twenty, that he he wanted it all. And, and I told him, I says, Nick, I says, we both worked our asses off. I says, I was right there next to you. I says, I was contributing. I had contributions in that song. I, I says, you, you're you're minimalizing me right out the door. I says, and, and I resent it. And and it was that song. That's you know the number one song. Like it's it's just crazy how that happened. How it was that particular yeah. song. And, and now now he he you know you know the thing that calls me is in, in interviews after that they 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 would ask him uh, uh, what inspired you Mick to write that song and uh, so so he would he would go into this long long dialogue uh, about about writing the song himself. Mm-hmm. I I you know and again. Lou, when I was watching the Dan Rather interview for the 25th millionth time, I'm like, that was the perfect opportunity for you to say something. But I, I get, I know how you are. You're, you're such a, a sweetheart, and and I know you wouldn't have done it at that point. But it was, it was. I, I'm sitting there going, oh my gosh, this is the perfect opportunity because Mick does. He goes into this long story, and I'm not saying anything bad about him, but it's just he does. He goes into the long story about how he created the song S- and self. Is is it self grandizement? Pretty much, <laughs> pretty much. Is that, is that the word? That's Grand- it's grandiose. It's it's a good one. Grandiose. Yes, that's that's the one. Yeah, that's the word. Yeah. So it, it was like I, I'm sitting there going, that was the perfect opportunity for you to just kind of jump in. But you know, I understand why you didn't. I, I mean, you, you're just you are who you are. You're reserved, and and I understand. So that's why I think it would just be that. That, that could have been a very different ending to that interview. Hmm. It, it, it really could have been. Yeah, it could have been fistfight. Uh, <laughs> live, live on the on the news. You know, <laughs> they would have edited that really. <laughs> but now, Lou, you know, moving on to other things, you're releasing new music with your All Star Band this year. Yes, I am. What can yep. we expect from that? Like, what are you going to be singing? Well. There's a number of brand new songs on on the on the album. Nice. And, and when when I when I decided that I wanted to do another album, I went back to my Ready or Not album and my Long Hard Look album and my Shadow King album. Nice. And, and listened to the song ideas that didn't make the album. Most of them were were great ideas that the songs weren't finished in time to 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 make the 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 cut. You know. And, and we had the, we had we went with ten other songs, but but in in both the first my first solo, second solo, and Shadow King, there were three or four song ideas that were almost finished, and they were really good. Mm-hmm. And, and I hadn't even thought about them in thirty years. But I went back and I just started listening for the sake of listening, and, and I, I would say three or four, maybe five of those songs on my new album. Come come from those those uh, song fragments that that didn't quite finish, you know. And I mean, you've been talking about these songs for a long time. I have. So I'm glad that you're. You know, how, how far are you into the process of getting the songs finished? We we we've got we've got two more songs to finish, and and, and uh, that should be done within the next month or maybe two months. We're hoping for a, a uh, early summer release. Nice, nice, a- and and hopefully it'll be climbing the charts. Yep, just I've, in time, just in time for our award. That, yay! I'm so excited because again, you've been talking. Wouldn't about, that wouldn't that be something? That would uh, be incredible timing, wouldn't it? It would be, and you know, again, I get chills because you've been talking about these songs uh, for years and just to finally hear them, you know, come to light, everyone is going to just eat them up. And yes, just in time for the award, it will be absolutely amazing. Now, please tell me, what is the happiest memory you have from being in Foreigner? Oh, there, there's there's so many of them. Uh, I think Diane Green is definitely one. Um, oh dear, we 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 played a, a, a lot of big big shows in 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 Germany. We, we played some of our biggest shows in in, in um, where Hitler used to to have his armies show off and march in front of him. 
I think it's called Nuremberg Ring. Wow. Which is a big, big outdoor outdoor area. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think there were over 100,000 people there when we played. <sighs> Wow. Yeah, uh, we, we've had stuff like that all over the place. We've had great shows in in uh, in in England uh, at the Birmingham uh, 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 indoor stadium, and there, there's just there's just a, a lot of special moments that over the years that that have have been really fun. And how does that relate to? you performing today and people traveling to see you and they're so happy, you know, to be able to say, Hey, Lou, I came, I drove from, you know, such place to come see you. Yes, And they do do that. They do. Mm -hmm. And, and how does that, like, how is that different for you? Because back in the day, right. When you were doing these huge hundred thousand plus people arena shows, you weren't able to connect with your fans, but today you're able to. So how is that different for you? Well, you know, I'll tell you how it's different. After the show, after our shows now I'm with my band, I go back to the dressing room, change my shirt, uh, uh, splash some water on my face, and I go out to where our merchandise is. And the people that buy the merchandise, I sign, I sign whatever they buy for them. Mm-hmm. And I talk to them for a few minutes. And it's so much fun for these people to, to, uh, come up and shake my hand or hug me and tell me that that was the best show they've seen in years and blah, blah, blah. You know, it's, it's, it's really special. Uh, that's part, that's part of, the the concert experience for me now is to 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 actually go out and and uh, uh, spend time with, with the people who've just seen me perform. I mean, really, it, it it it, and it's an honor for me, Lou. Every time I talk to you, it's an honor, absolute honor. I I can't tell you enough how I thank you for being so kind and generous with your time with me and. You know, your fans truly, truly love and adore you for, for real. And I, I am so thrilled for you to finally be on this ballot for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And everybody can go to vote.rockhall.com. And Lou, when I think of 70s and 80s voices, male voices, yes, I think of Steve Perry. I'm not going to lie. But I also think of. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. You have my blessing. <laughs> but you know what, Lou? You are right next to him. N- hands down, your voice is, y- you carried me and millions and millions of other people through our teenage years. And you are the voice. You are the voice and we love you so much we're so happy for you i i can't say it enough times and i just want to appreciate that so much we thank you very very much lou you are the best you are a treasure and thank you for being with us again oh my my pleasure thank you we will see you soon lou okay then take care now hey lou lou Lou, yes yes yes. yeah this is al do you love me yes al do you love me What's that? Do you love me? Of course I do. Okay, thank you. Good night, Lou. (laughs) Bye, Lou. (laughs) (laughs) Bye, Bye, guys. Lou, sweet dreams. All right. Bye. Bye. (laughs) I just can't. Oh, Oh, my God. I, uh, I love him. I love him so much.